today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can install Ubuntu Mate on your Raspberry Pi 4, and then we'll get to installing some pretty useful software and just making our desktop look cleaner. So, to start out with this tutorial, we're going to open up our preferred web browser, and you're going to type Ubuntu Mate, and then you're going to go to the Raspberry Pi Ubuntu Mate website. It will be linked in the description, and you can just scroll down. Or wait, we have to go right here to download. Go scroll down to Raspberry Pi. And there are 32-bit images, but I would recommend 64-bit because it just it's better in my opinion. So click on 64-bit. You can go with 20.04 if you want. But in this video, I'm going to be using 20.10 and I am going to be USB booting. So keep that in mind. If you do want a USB boot, feel free to do it. It works very well. So you click on right here. You can use torrent magnet link or you can just direct download i i just did direct download and it's going to start downloading for me right here i actually have it already downloaded so i'm not going to re-download it but after you have it downloaded, open up whatever tool you use for flashing images i have both raspberry pi imager and etcher but i prefer etcher for flashing images so you just open up etcher and you're going to go flash from file and you're going to find your Ubuntu Mate Raspberry Pi image. Select target, select your target, and flash it. And then once it's done, plug it into your Pi and boot it up. Okay, so here we are. We're on the desktop, and it's asking us to configure our system configuration. So I want English. I'm just going to hit continue. And then it's going to ask me for my keyboard and some other information. So that is the right keyboard. And wherever you want. Uh, you can just I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now. It's not where I am obviously, but You can just skip through there and your name put whatever you want Just sign into your desktop and your computer's name you can do whatever But I just like to name my Pi Pi because I'm used to that on Raspberry Pi OS and that's what I enjoy Password blah blah you can just configure that stuff you can go log in automatically if you like, which I'm actually going to do. Because my Pi, I don't really need a password, honestly. Because I'm not taking it anywhere or anything. It's just at my house. So here we are. It's installing our system. So it's going to configure everything and get it ready. So this shouldn't take too long. When it's done, it will reboot and will be in the desktop. Okay, guys. So it's done configuring my system. And I booted up and I have this nice Ubuntu Mate welcome screen. So I'm going to take a look at that in a second, but before I do take a look at it, right now my desktop is running at 720, and the Pi can handle 1080 pretty well, so I just want to configure that real fast. So I'm going to go to Control Center, and right here to Display, and you see it's 720, I'm just going to take that up to 1080. Right here, 1920 times 1080, and we can click Apply, and keep this configuration okay so now our desktop just looks a lot better it's a lot wider and we have more space to do stuff so now let's go over here to configure our system and see what we can do in this welcome screen so right here it says desktop layout so let's click on that and see what we have here we have familiar we have mutiny redmond and cupertino so this is like the default ubuntu make one Mutinity makes it more like Unity or GNOME, kind of. Redmond gives you like a Windows-style desktop. And Cupertino gives you like a macOS-style dock and stuff like that. I'm actually, I like the familiar one, so I'm going to stick to that one. But definitely check these out if you do. And there are a few more on it, actually. There's Traditional, Contemporary, Netbook, and Pantheon. So I'm a fan of Pantheon, that's what elementary desktop uses. But there's a lot of good stuff in here, so take a look at these different themes. And they're super easy to change, so just take a look at it. And then we have color selection. I actually do like this. There's a lot of really nice colors in here that you can change, and it changes your whole system color. So I'm a fan of this blue teal color. So if I want to install, I can click install, and then it should start downloading and installing that color for me. So, okay, now it's going. So, it's updating the cache, and then it should start installing it for me. Okay, so that 
color theme is installed and in my opinion right now my desktop just looks so much cleaner and so much better because I honestly I'm not a fan of that green that Ubuntu Mate comes with it just doesn't look good to my eye but this one looks really nice I mean you can play around with these different colors in here play around with them and see what one you like more but teal is probably my favorite in these like even if you open up the file manager all this stuff is blue now except instead of green but yeah so now the next thing that i would do after installing ubuntu mate on my raspberry pi would probably be to install chromium web browser because chromium web browser is just it works better on the raspberry pi over firefox in my opinion and i'm a more f i'm a bigger fan of the interface and i just like it more so you open up the software boutique right here and you go over here to search where is search or you can just go to internet right here chromium browser you just click install and after that it would start downloading chromium web browser for you and you can get it installed there's actually a lot of good stuff in this software boutique a lot of them are snaps but there it's nice to have a nice little software center on your ubuntu mate so once you're done installing Chromium, let's just launch it and see how it goes. I'd already installed it before, that's why. But here we have, and I want to make it default, so I just click right there. Yes. And here we have Chromium Web Browser on our Ubuntu Mate, and it works really well. It just, it's better over uh, Firefox in my opinion. So what can we do? Add to panel. I'm going to add Chromium Web Browser to here. Wait. Let's go back, create, copy in a launcher from the applications menu. That's what I want. Internet. I'm going to go over here to Internet. And I'm going to find Chromium Web Browser. Click Add. And close. So now we have Chromium Web Browser up on our little bar right here. And it just looks better. So it's easy to launch, and we can do everything from there. So the second thing I'd probably do was would be to open up my terminal and install NeoFetch. Because right here, Mate Terminal is the one that we're going to want. I'm going to open that, and NeoFetch shows all my system information, and it's a very useful tool in my opinion. So sudo apt, not update, sudo apt install, NeoFetch, hit enter. Type in your password that you created earlier and hit Y when prompted. So now we'll have NeoFetch installed in our system so we'll be easily be able to tell how long our system's been running, what version it is, and basic information that we might want to know like that. So it should be done in one second. We can type NeoFetch and here's our system information. So it looks good, works well, and that's just something that I like to have on my system for easy access and next what do i want to have on my system i want raspberry pi imager to be able to flash my operating systems and format sd cards and stuff like that so you go over to this link i'll leave in the description and it's index of debian pool main raspberry pi imager so what you're going to do you're going to need to scroll all the way to the bottom right here rpi imager 1.5 arm 64 it has to say arm 64 because it, this is an ARM64 operating system and you have to have that. So download that one, hit keep, and it's done downloading right now. We can actually just close that Chromium, open up Luke F. Renner's home, go over to downloads, and it should be right here. You can actually just go open with package installer. And it's going to get the information about it. And we can go install package. Type in your password. Hit authenticate. So now it's just going to get Raspberry Pi Imager and it's going to start installing it in our system. You don't even have to use a command line, it's already done. We can close that up, close this up, and if we were to oh, go over here, it's probably in accessories right here, Imager. Here we go. The Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.5 on our Ubuntu Mate. It works really well. You can access all your operating systems. And it's just a really nice addition to have on here. So that's about it for Raspberry Pi Imager. We're just adding some more software to our Ubuntu Mate. 
The next thing that I probably want is PyApps, because PyApps actually has a thing where it detects if your system is 64-bit or 32-bit, and it only shows apps that are compatible with 64-bit. So all the apps that it shows should work on here. So I'm just going to scroll down to install it, copy this, menu, and we can just search for terminal. Honestly, I should add terminal to the top right there. It would be pretty useful. Just minimize that. Paste our what we copied. Oh, there's no git on our system. That's a problem. So sudo apt install git. We need to install git. It comes pre-installed in Raspberry Pi OS, but it must not come pre-installed in Ubuntu Mate. It's no biggie. We can easily install it with sudo apt install git. And all these commands, I'll be linking them down below in the description. So you guys, for ease, you could just copy it straight over from the video description. So you don't have to try to copy them over from the video and stuff like that. So git should start installing for me right now. Okay, now we can just repaste that command. It's going to clone into PyApps and start installing it on my system for me. So let's hope that's compatible with the mate terminal. Yad is required by not installed. Install now, yes. So it will get Yad and we'll, we should be going soon. Okay, so PyApps is done installing because you see it says installation complete. We can close up our terminal and we even have a little desktop icon right here. You can click launch anyway. And theoretically it should launch. Okay, so right here it is. And now let's try to install something. So there is a chance that it might not work because PyApps doesn't like all terminals. It really only likes LXDE terminal. If we were to open up internet, let's say, and I want Discord probably because I use it a lot. Click the plus. Oh. So it looks like it's actually not going to support the mate terminal. Oops, let's just do that. So... BotSpot is still working on getting it to work on all the terminals, but right now it looks like it's not supporting the mate terminal. But there is still a workaround that I'll show you guys. So what we can do is we can open up our home directory. Right here, you can go over to Pi Apps. Go over to Apps, and let's say you wanted Discord. So you would just have to go in here and search for the Ds and find Discord. And then you would open up a terminal. Terminal right here. And this is a 64-bit system, so do you, you'd want the install 64 script. So you just do like just drag it into your terminal, hit hit enter, and it will start installing a Discord for you. So it's still using the same scripts that are in PyApps. You just can't really benefit from this graphical user interface. So that is kind of a bummer, but you still have access to all of your apps that you'd want, and you can install it by just dragging in it. So it's not a huge loss, so don't not install PAPS on Ubuntu Mate because you can't use the graphical user interface. You can still benefit from all of the awesome software that is in here, and it's just nice to have on your system. So just let that Discord install right there, and yeah, so it's just a nice addition to have on Ubuntu Mate. Like another app that I'd probably want would be Bolena Etcher. And you can see if it doesn't have a install 64 script, don't try to install it because it will turn out faulty and it won't install in your system correctly. So I could install that later if I wanted to. While that's installing, I'm going to open back up Chromium. Well, I already had a tab open. So we can just make this bigger. And the next thing that I probably want is Box86. So Nova Spirit, the awesome YouTuber you guys probably heard of, he has a Raspberry Pi Arch64 desktop GitHub page. So he has a Box86 install thing right here. This is needed for Ubuntu 20.10, he says. So we're just going to, so you first have to add the DPG. Just copy that. Open up your terminal. It, Discord is done installing. So what this is doing, it's adding a 32-bit thing to my system. 
So theoretically, you'll be able to run 32-bit software too. So now to get that in there, you go sudo apt update and just let that get all of the new 32-bit updates and stuff like that. You see it's saying ARM HF. ARM HF means 32-bit. ARM 64 means 64-bit. Next, we're going to need all of, these, all of these dependencies. So copy these. Oh wait, we're on Ubuntu 20.10, sorry. So we're gonna need these ones. If you're on 20.04, copy the first one. 20.10, copy the second one. Copy these, open back your terminal, and paste it in there. Hit enter. And hit Y when prompted. So there's a lot of, a lot of these that I need, so just be patient. Okay, so actually all those things are already installed. So now we can start installing Box86. But first, if you wanted to install Zoom or Steam, just copy these dependencies and install it. I won't be doing that in this video, but just follow this guide on this GitHub page. So now we can actually compile Box86 ourselves, or we could use the PyApp script, which has it already compiled, so it will be a lot faster. I'm going to open up PyApps, go to Apps, and we're gonna find box 86. So you see there's only install 32, but because we already added the RMHF, it won't matter, we can still install it. So just do that, hit enter, and it should start. I don't know, if, let's see if it works. So now it's trying to get the box 86 connect, and it's gonna download the file and install it in our system for us. Okay, so you see, since we use that PyApp script, it just installed it so fast, and we're ready to go. So it says it's installed, let's make sure. Let's type box86, and we have all of these box86 things coming up. And actually, you can also install Wine with this so easily. So I actually had this guide that actually you guys really liked. I got It got a lot of views. So just follow this guide on installing Wine, and it will work exactly the same. You just copy those same commands from the description of this video, and you should have Wine installed on your Ubuntu Mate. I'm not gonna be showing in that video, but I'll be linking that video down in the description. But I mean, it's this easy to set up Ubuntu Mate on your Pi, make it look cool, it runs super well, you can install most of the software that you want, and it's just super nice to have on your Raspberry Pi. So I hope this guide was helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions or want to know about any other software that you can install on here, just hit me down below in the comments and let me know. So please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.